In this session, we are going to understand how to apply a reciprocal services method. See, in reciprocal services method, there may be service departments which may be exchanging services. I mean, one service department providing service to the other and receiving service from that department. In such cases, how to apportion those overheads? In such cases, we can apportion the overheads using three methods in that one of the method is simultaneous equation method. And in this session, we are going to understand how to make use of this simultaneous equation method. So we have uh, this case study. Let's go through. The service department expenses are here. That is, you have a boiler house which is uh, spending uh, $3,000 and a pump room which is spending some $600. So the expenses of service departments are basically $3,600. And you have the information about the allocation. You have two production departments, production department A and B. And uh, the services rendered by the boiler house and pump room are given here. Boiler house renders 60% of its service to production department A, 35% of its service to production department B, and it renders 5% of its service to the other service department called pump room. Similarly, the next service department that is pump room renders 10% of its services to production department A, 40% to production department B and 50% of its services are rendered to the service department boiler house. So in this case, how do you find what is the cost of or exact cost of the service departments? Because what you see here is boiler house spending $3,000. Yes, they have spent $3,000, but of which 5% has gone for pump room. And if you look at the pump room, they have spent $600 of which 50% had gone for production department A and B whereas remaining 50% has gone only for the other service department which is boiler house. So boiler house cost is not this mere $3,000 because apart from $3,000 it has also availed 50% of services from pump room. So 50% of pump room cost will get added to the boiler house cost. Similarly, the pump room cost is not mere $600 because it has received 5% services from boiler house. So 5% of $3,000 will be added to the pump room cost. And all these can be solved using a simultaneous equation. So let's proceed. At first, we have to find out what are the expenses of these two service departments. We have made or we have already discussed a little about it. So. How do you find what is the expense of a boiler house? So let's assume a boiler house expenses as B. So I'm going to write, let boiler house expenses be B. And let's assume uh, pump room expenses to be P. Why we have to make this assumption? Because Whatever the cost we had in the case study or we had in the question does not factor the cost of service re received from the other service department. So we should add that also only then we will know what is the exact cost of these departments. So now what do we understand is the cost of boiler house department B is equal to $3,000. Yes, we have seen this. but it also includes 50% of pump room expenses. So I'll write 1 by 2 of pump room expenses, which is P. Because in the question, if you notice, pump room has spent $600, of which 50% of it goes for a boiler house. So P is $3,000 plus 1 by 2 into P because $3,000 plus 50% of pump room expenses. And what about the expenses of pump room? P is equal to, we know it is $600 and it also received services from boiler house. It is 5% of boiler house cost. So 5% on $3,000. So what we should write is a 5% on boiler house cost. 
So 5% can be written as 5 by 100 or it can also be written as 1 by 20. So 1 by 20 of B. So now you have an equation. In equation 1 you have B is equal to $3,000 plus 1 by 2 into P and P is equal to $600 plus 1 by 20 into P. So what we can do is we can substitute either of the value in any of the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this value of B in this equation because here you have B. So you substitute that value. So I'll write here substituting the value of B in equation P. So we know that P is equal to $600 plus 1 by 20 into B. So in this place I'm going to write what is B. So $600 plus 1 by 20. We know what is B because here we have uh, written the equation it is $3,000 plus 1 by 2 P. So it is $3,000 plus 1 by 2 multiplied by P. So this will give us that P is equal to $600 plus $3,000 into 1 by 20 is going to be $150 plus a 1 by 2 P into 1 by 20 is going to be 1 by 40 P and on the left hand side we still have P so we'll sum them P is equal to $750 plus 1 by 40 P so this is going to help us to find out what is the value of P so what we'll do is we'll cross multiply So we would get uh, 40p is equal to $30,000 minus p and uh, so you will get 39p is equal to $30,000 and p is going to be approximately this $30,000 divided by 39 you would get approximately $769. So this is going to be the value of P and once you get the value of P then things will become simple. You just have to substitute this value in the other equation to find out the value of B. We'll do that also now. We have to substitute the value of P in equation B and what was our equation B? We know B is equal to $3,000 plus 1 by 2 into P. And now you know what is the value of P that is 769. So $3,000 plus 1 by 2 into 769. And this would give you the value of P which is $3,385. So in this way, you have the value of boiler house and you also have the value of a power room which is $769. So now what you have just found is what is the expenses incurred by these two service departments. Now we have to apportion these expenses only then our excess would be complete. And here if you note boiler house actually provides or uh, provides services at 60% to production department A and 35% to production department B. So whatever the boiler house cost we have derived which is $3,385 this should be apportioned between the production department A and B in the ratio of 60 is to 35. Similarly the pump room has a ratio of 10 is to 40 for production departments A and B and this cost should be apportioned and and don't get confused with this remaining 5 and 50 this is what we have taken care in this simultaneous equation so what we'll do we will apportion those expenses now so I'll write here apportionment of expenses Apportionment of expenses we have uh, production departments A and B. 
So I'll write here particulars. We had production department A and B and we are going to first transfer the or apportion the cost of a boiler house. So boiler house had a cost of uh, $3,385 in the ratio of uh, or this expenses have to be apportioned between A and B in the ratio of 60% and 35%. So this 3385 will apportion and 60% of this is going to be $2031 and 35% is going to be $1185. This is uh, regarding boiler house. Then what we have is power room. Power room expenses are $769 and the ratio which we have to follow is 10% and 40%. So 10% of 769 dollar to 76.9 we'll call it as 77 dollar and 40% of 769 is 307 dollar. So we'll take the total. So now we have the total expenses of production department A and B which is 2108 dollar and 1492 dollar.